Hello and welcome to Disc Review, the podcast that goes track by track through a different album each week. And we're your hosts, Max and Matt. Join us as we explore some of our favorite records. No, I'm a fan, I swear, I swear. I, I feel like I've become a music normie. I'm tired of being Mr. Positive Guy. Dude, it's, that's not human. This is certifiably the most boring album I've ever heard. Uh, and there's a reason they don't do it, because it's terrible. We hope you enjoy the show. Let's get into it. Hello, hello. So this week, we're going to be talking about Coming Home by Falling in Reverse, which we actually um, did have a couple requests for Falling in Reverse, uh, not particularly this album. Um, but I really like this album, so I wanted to talk about it. Um, and I, I feel like we have good history with this album. I mean, it came out while I was visiting you in California when we were kids. And so we listened to it, you know, the same time. And I have memories attached to that. Um, but before we get into any of that, I think we need to talk about some of the stuff that's been coming out because, um, just in this last week or two, there's a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, that came out do you want to maybe go first about that yeah let's see obviously the hot news right now is the new taylor swift album i don't know if we talked about that did you listen Mm -hmm. at all i don't think we did i haven't listened to it yet uh i did i think what i liked the most about it was just the style very much from one of her other records reputation it's just got that same style that i liked a lot but besides that new night to 75 record was definitely the highlight for me that was the week before and also just a great record and been having a ton of fun with it. Just really happy with all the changes they made. I think we'll talk about that record and we didn't talk about the one before that. So we'll probably go back and do that soon and get you some reviews for those. They're really relevant right now. So we're hoping to do that. Yeah, I really liked the new 1975 album. I thought it was really cool. And some other stuff that came out, a new Water Park song. In my personal opinion, I think it's their best song. I really liked that. I know you... Um, really like funeral gray um i think it's this new one is just really good it's featuring black bear and i really like black bear so i I think he did a good job and then of course the new sleeping with sirens album which i thought was pretty okay um i'm i'm not a huge sleeping with sirens fan anymore so um i look at it through a jaded lens but i i didn't think it was bad yeah a bunch of good new music right now it's a good it's a good time so why don't you start by giving us your overall thoughts on the album coming home? I think it's got some really high points. I think it has the classic little, little dip in quality in the middle. Just I think a lot of records do that. I'm sure we'll talk about that track by track. But in general, those highlights are really strong. I think it's the best that this band has put out, in my opinion. This is their high point for me. I'm not like a huge Flanders fan. Most of their other discography I'm not really familiar with, but I... Remember this coming out, like you said, we listened to it. I was a big fan uh, while it was really fresh and new. Coming back to that, I think there's still a couple songs I think hold up. Yeah, what I think I liked most about this record is that it was just new. It was fresh, right? It wasn't like the other Falling in Reverse albums. And I have a little more experience with those albums. And I liked them as a kid, but I I can't really listen to them now. I think that... um, Part of what bugs me is how goofy a lot of the songs are that falling in reverse does um very goofy very strange uh, lyrical content and they do that on purpose um and that's not to say that it's not found anywhere in this album because it is but it's this album takes a more serious tone and that was very refreshing and i i really like it so why don't we start with first track which is the title track coming home i think that this is a wonderful opener uh to one of my uh favorite childhood albums i don't think anyone was expecting the band to take this turn into a really serious and emotional uh music that's not to say that um you know it's serious all throughout but far less than any other falling reverse record this song is really beautiful to me it's about being far from the ones you love and telling them that no matter the distance you'll always be there for them and then in the chorus he sings about he's coming home to them I think that my favorite line might be when he says, I can finally hear the message loud and clear, which to me means that after all this time, he is seeing what's really important to him. You know, it's not traveling or work. It's it's his family and, and the people he loves. Yeah, and this song leans a lot into the imagery from the album art of, you know, it's kind of sci-fi. Obviously, it's got an astronaut on it uh, with the reflection of 
which is which is kind of cool, like a campfire and little you know humble home, which I like that little uh, contrasting imagery. But yeah, this has that little like robotic voice counting down that I think really. I like the cohesion that this brings as an opener to like showing you here's the style of the music and also here's some of our um, tying into the imagery that we've put on with the art. I think it's pretty cool. That leads us to track two, Broken. Broken was a single and I, I think I get why. I mean, it works well as a song to give you the overall sound of the album. But I think that for me, this one is probably the weakest song on the album. It just isn't as interesting to me as a lot of the other songs are, especially lyrically. I do like the synth in the verse. I think that it's, you know, it's low-key. They don't overdo it there. But I don't have much more to say about this one just because I, I think it's kind of boring. Yeah, I, I think this is a little generic, especially with the lyrics, like you said. It's just not... It's got that generic, we are, you know, the revolution. I feel like I've heard 100 songs that tap into that of, uh, you know, this commodity review about being you know, feeling like you're broken. And I get that some people are looking for that. Uh, but I think I, I like a little bit more to tap into a little more. I just like being, feeling like and hearing the personality of the artist a little more is usually what I'm looking for. So that's why this one has always, I've kind of glossed over it. Yeah, maybe it has something to do with like the collective versus the individual. I mean, this is more yeah. of a collectivist song where it's like, we are this broken generation. Um and I, I like more of the individualistic stuff that kind of dives deeper into what people are actually feeling one on one. And yeah. I think that I think that the next song does that really well. Yeah. The next song is Loser. And I love Loser. This is also a very emotional one and I've always felt like I could really connect to the lyrics. It, you know, has themes about change and becoming different people all the while struggling to Except who you've been and, and who you have become. The bridge is really what gets me emotional because you can really tell that he feels what he's saying. It's self-deprecating with the line, uh, look what you've become, all the damage that you've done, which I think that many people can relate to. And the guitar solo is also pretty fun. Yeah, I agree. This song is one of the strongest. I think this was a single as well, but this one just works a lot better for me right like it's way more personal and it's about you know one person feeling like a loser and their you know his experiences with that and i think it's really easy to tap into that emotional core i think a lot of people can relate to those feelings of like feeling not great about yourself so i think a lot of people probably do you know can attach to this song so the next song is a little different i'd say it kind of switches tone a little bit and obviously because this is a youtube friendly uh, experience we're having here um we're gonna censor <laughs> the name um but it's f you and all your friends it's funny that this album came out while i was visiting you in california when we were teenagers because i have a distinct memory of driving in the car with you listening to this song i'm pretty sure while we were trying to film one of our uh little videos uh movies that we'd always try to make but this is a song about being betrayed by a close friend and feeling like they became someone completely unrecognizable to you and this this is something that hits home for me because i have had friendships in the past that had you know pretty sad and unfortunate endings the line i taught you all about breaking hearts i never thought that you would take it that far it is emotional for me because as a kid i always felt like you know my friendships were really strong and we all really loved each other and now you know some of the things that certain people have said to me um, have broken my heart. And so I, I like this song for that reason. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think this is kind of an interesting premise. And I know I have too, and I'm sure a lot of people have, where just friendships don't work out or things change and you can be a little bitter about it. And this kind of encapsulates those feelings of it's, I mean, it's clearly a very angry song and it's trying to be, I don't know, I think it works for letting out that kind of you know, anger and frustration a little bit. Uh, it's kind of cathartic. Listen, I think. And that brings us to I Hate Everyone. This might be my favorite song here. I, I think it's really strong. I think the name sounds more emo than the song really is. It's, it's about a relationship that ends, which causes you to be cynical and angry towards everyone around you. My favorite line is, I hate your guts. I hate his too. I hate myself for loving you. Because I think it really outlines the contradictory nature of 
hating someone that you loved for so long. And the bridge is really where it caps it off for me is uh, the line, I hate everyone but you. It kind of flips it in a, a way that I wasn't expecting. And it was really fun. I enjoy that a lot. Yeah, this was also my pick for my favorite on the record. I just think the style is really unique, different. It's coming in with this acoustic guitar. It's definitely got a different feel to it. And you're right, the lyrics are just really strong. I think the strongest on the record. He's telling this story and you kind of, like you said, you kind of follow along and then it changes and you just feel like you're learning more about the situation and him in a way that just makes it a really fun listen. This is, a, this is the best song, in my, my opinion. And after that is I'm Bad at Life. And this song is interesting to me because I, I actually, I actually like most of it, but the one line in the chorus, I'm bad at life, I think is just not a good line. I don't think it's very clever. This song has so many clever lines, but that line kind of kills it for me. I think the vocal performance on this one is really impressive and fun to sing along to, especially the part where he kind of censors himself from saying the F word, which is funny because you know all the other songs say the f word a lot so it, you know it's it's kind of goofy but it's it's playful but yeah I, I just something about the chorus it's not it, it feels a little cringy to me yeah i agree i think it's the song's held back by the lyrics especially that line just doesn't really um work i don't really connect with that just really general vague statement but I mean, there's there is some emotion in this song, um, like you said in the vocal performance, especially. It kind of gets really big and dramatic towards the end, and I actually like that. But I agree, this isn't, um, you know, a perfect song. Kind of held back in some regards. And then that brings us to "Hanging On." I think this song is really similar to "Broken" to me. It has some good parts, and I would even say that the verses are pretty great. But the chorus is just boring and really doesn't grab my attention, making it a weak point in the album. I, I still think it's better than Broken, but, I mean, you and I, while we were talking about it earlier, you kind of had some different opinions, so what do you think about Hanging On? Yeah, this is one of my favorites, honestly. I think the verses, like I said, are so strong, and I just think it's got a really good atmosphere. I, I think I agree, like, the verse, I and mean, of course, doesn't have much going on. It definitely doesn't, uh, you know, beat out a lot of other songs, regards to how catchy the chorus is but i don't know i also really like the bridge it's got this you know repeated refrain that's got a really good melody and uh you can kind of get lost in next is superhero the album really picks up for me here with superhero this song is so fun and has a really good message to it i think so many times we want to be you know the hero of our own story fixing other people and and being a light to others and having your life look and feel all put together. But the chorus talks about how he's so imperfect and he can never be the guy who can save other people. All he wants to do is be a better version of himself. And I, I feel like I can relate to that, um, especially like growing up, you kind of realize that you don't have all the answers and um, as much as you would love to help other people and you should help other people, um, a lot of times you got to kind of figure your own stuff out first yeah i agree i think that's a good message for people a lot of people who are listening to this record and what kind of genre he's he's targeting um i think a song rolls a little bit for me i think the chorus is all right but i bet the imagery isn't working as strong for me but i think it's all right then we have straight to hell i remember my first listen through of this album when i was a kid i felt disappointed at this point in the record because i really wanted the album to be heavy and it just is not so i i think i saw the name straight to hell and i was like oh surely this is gonna be the one that's heavy this is gonna have some screams in it um but of course it isn't uh looking back i'm really glad that the album is the way it is i think that it found a really good tone and this song is a great one for me although i don't really connect with all the lyrics mainly um the part about casting a spell and sending you to hell it's uh sounds a little weird but i like this song yeah it's it's trying to be edgy a little bit with its imagery i think it's it's i mean it's one of the heavier songs it might be the heaviest i would say yeah. uh i kind of similar opinions a superhero i think i will roll on these two songs right here and just 
Uh, I think they're okay, but not grab my attention, not stand out. I Don't Mind is the next track. This is one of the most emotional songs on the album. The first line in the verse is so strong. My biggest fear is coming true. Mother, I'm becoming you. I think it's just so honest and dark. Another line I really love is, Mother, you are an addict and you passed it down to me, but who am I to cast a stone with a daughter I never see? I don't know. This song just really uh, tugs at my heartstrings, and that's why I think this album is so good. Not only does it make me feel emotional, but I didn't expect it to make me feel emotional, and that's kind of um, when art hits you the best is when you weren't preparing for it, and it hits um, in all the right ways at the right time. That's kind of how I feel about this one. I agree. There's some good emotional lines here. I like the moody, like, you know, vibe it's going for on purpose, and they commit to that style and give this a really distinct sound, and I like the song for that. And then uh, the last song, other than the bonus tracks, which we'll get to, is The Departure. The name is very fitting because this song takes a big departure from the sound of the other songs and does something different. I don't I don't think it's bad what it does, but it just isn't the same style that we've been hearing. It's more cinematic, and it feels kind of like just a mood song. It's got a strong tone and is very gloomy while still being pretty fast-paced. And I it, I kind of go back and forth on this one because I do like it. I don't know how I feel about it closing out the album when it kind of just doesn't really cap off uh, some of the things we've been hearing. Yeah, I agree. It might be a weird choice as a closer, but I really respect how different the song is. And I think it's a great way to do something new. And they nail it with what they're going for. I think they they achieved it. And it's, and it's got some decent melodies, and I think it works. So this album has two bonus tracks on the deluxe edition. The first one is Right Now. Um, and I, th- I think it was genius of them to put these tracks on there because um, I think a lot of Falling in Reverse fans really like this style of like really weird, really goofy, um, kind of poppy rock songs. And um, I don't know. I I don't really love it. I you know the whole um, alien theme of right now is just too weird for me. Um, I think music is is one of those art forms where I kind of go in there to f- to feel. Um, and sometimes it's to party, and sometimes it's to you know uh, for ambiance. This song it just doesn't connect with me very well. Yeah, I'm glad you used the word goofy, because that's the word I used as well. The song is ridiculously goofy, and sometimes, honestly, too goofy. It is Mm -hmm. insane. I think I know what you mean, where you're like, I want to feel, and sometimes I feel like I'm being preached at in this song a little bit. You know, why are we talking about, you know, whatever social issue he thinks is a problem? Um, Kind of holds the song back for me. I think the only thing you can't deny, whether or not you like it or not, is that this chorus is so catchy. It's kind of unbelievable <laughs> how good that chorus just melody is. I think they absolutely nail it on both of these bonus tracks. But I get what you mean. I think that it's great. I'm glad that they didn't like mess what they were going for with the actual core album with these songs. And mm-hmm. if they're going to write them, put them on the deluxe, give the fans what they want, but also retain that core integrity on the record, I think was a really good choice. So I respect that. I think these songs are fun. Um, this one's much goofier and has lyrics, more lyrics that don't work. So, but we can hop into the next song. Yep, the second bonus track and also the last track we'll talk about here is Paparazzi. Um, as far as the bonus track goes, I, I think Paparazzi is, is pretty good. It's, like you said, so catchy, so catchy, and a lot of fun lyrics here. And, and yeah, to talk about what you were saying I think it's so good that they didn't ruin the integrity of the album by putting these songs mixed in with those uh, more sad songs. Um, it it would have been really distracting, but down here on the on the bonus material, it's kind of whatever you know. It's it's given people what they want, um, and and like I said, this one does have great lines and it's fun to jam out to with your friends. Yeah, I think this song really works. The lyrics here, I like the self-referential jabs at themselves and like kind of the idea of fame within their genre 
Uh, obviously joking about Hot Topic and Warp Tour, which has made them famous and a lot of money, I'm sure. And just the nature of, you know, making songs to go on the radio and and the way, you know, they're chasing fame in the music industry, I think is really interesting. On top of, and my pick for the strongest chorus on the record, this is such a good chorus and just has some great energy. I think this song's a ton of fun. And for the goofy Fall in Reverse song, this might be my favorite. Yeah, something I was noticing while you were talking was um, none of the songs on the album really fall flat as far as streams go. Like, I mean, they have a couple that get a lot more streams than the other ones, but the the rest of them kind of sit in the same frame of like four to seven million. So I don't know. That kind of tells me that this was a hit, even though I'm pretty sure that as far as like the core fan base goes, this wasn't really all that interesting to everybody. Um, I mean, it's not, none of these songs are in their top five on Spotify. Let me see if it's in their top, no, not even their top 10 on Spotify. And um, it's not on their popular releases and the music they make is complete 180 from this now. So I don't know. Do you think this was just a miss for them in their eyes? Uh, I think it was a hit. You know, artistically maybe, but uh, financially probably not. And people are going to do what makes them the money. And I don't know. I guess there's a huge market for their goofy songs um, somewhere out there. And I don't think they've gone back to goofy, actually. They haven't at all. They've just gone more uh, kind of... I don't know. How would you describe it now? It's like big pop. It's... uh... You know, every song, they've only released singles for the past, like, what, five years? And they've all been, like, very um, larger-than-life um, orchestral pop metal songs. And they do, I mean, they're um, one of their newer ones, Popular Monster. I mean, it's not new. It's, like, two years old now. Um, just hit, like, 100 million on it's at 200 YouTube, million. and it's at 200 million here, so... I mean, it's, it's obviously very popular. Um, I don't really like it as much because it's not as um, emotional and personal. It's, um, I don't know, you know, it's not my style, but it's obviously a lot of people's style because they love it. But final thoughts, I think this was the peak for Fallen Reverse as a band, and I, it was fun to look back at. Yeah, I really enjoyed looking back at this one. I, I think that even though my music taste has changed a lot, I still really enjoy it. Um, there's a lot of good tracks here, a lot of good lines. So, yeah, I like Coming Home. I think that they should do more of this, even though they probably will not. But, yeah, now that we're done with that, why don't you talk about some of the concerts you've been going to? You've been a busy boy. Went and saw Say We Can Fly, an artist we've reviewed and interviewed in the past. Saw him play live, and... I think I said this probably when we reviewed him initially, but his voice live is the best I've ever heard and probably will ever hear. He sounds exactly the way he sounds on studio, but I just don't know. Like, not, I've seen plenty of artists, you know, who I think can sing in the studio version, and not that they're bad, but their voice doesn't hold that same, you know, you know, perfection, and their voice gets tired over time or whatever, and they're in there but more sloppy with hitting the notes, but he hit every note flawlessly, consistently at the loudest volume. I've heard somebody sing. It was, it's just, he's that impressive live and highly recommend if you're a fan of his music, seeing him live, supporting his tour. It was a ton of fun. Um, and did you go to that uh, 1975 concert yet? No, that's, that's coming up. I think they're starting their tour now. Make it around oh, the gotcha. country. I thought they were around the same time. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you for suggesting Falling in Reverse. I'm glad we were able to get around to this album. Uh, maybe we'll do some more of their records in the future. But yeah, we appreciate you. We'll see you later. <laughs>